Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much for holding this hearing. It's very timely, at least from my perspective, coming from Colorado, where we've had a bank failure in, in, in rural Colorado and Weld County that I want to talk to you about a little bit. I want to thank everybody here for your testimony. I think it's a very good reminder that we need to be very careful about how we think about our financial institutions in this country because they're not all the same and uh, not all of them contributed to the situation that we now find ourselves in. With respect to uh, too big to fail, which people have talked about from the point of view of the people living in Northeast Colorado who lost what to many people would seem was a very small bank, uh, that bank was too big to fail for them. It's affected the entire region. Uh, because commodity prices are where they are, and in this case, particularly dairy prices, it's become incredibly hard uh, to find replacement credit uh, uh, for the farmers and for the ranchers that are there. And I wonder, we've asked um, uh, the people administra administering the TARP whether or not they're taking into account those sorts of circumstances as they think about the distribution of the, of the TARP money. And I wonder if any of you have a perspective on um, how well or how poorly uh, the TARP is being administered when it comes to uh, small banks, to rural banks, community banks. Um, uh, the application process is an onerous one. The requirements of, for deposits is, are tough. And uh, I'm just curious whether you think we're getting done what we need to get done with respect to TARP. Um, why don't you go ahead and oops. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, in my opinion, the, uh, the TARP has helped to pick winners and losers. Uh, the big banks, uh, particularly the largest 19, have all been chosen as winners in this, uh, in this game because even though they were technically broke, they've been bailed out. The smaller community banks, if you are not a one or two rated with a camel rated uh, in the banks, you cannot qualify for the funds. And that does make that a kind of an unfair advantage of being to the large banks. So uh, I do know of a couple of banks that have had some financial difficulties around the country because of the areas they're located in. And they have applied for the funds and been denied uh, because the credit quality in that area is difficult. And obviously raising private capital in today's market is difficult. Mr. Jones. To some degree, we're, we're kind of guessing about what the criteria are and, and how the process goes because it's never been made public exactly what the criteria is to determine uh, uh, at, at Treasury and, and at the agencies in terms of their recommendation to Treasury and then Treasury's decision about who's going to be approved for CPP money under the, the TAR program and, and who isn't. Uh, so that's that's problematic to begin with, uh, but beyond that, it's it's our contention that there, uh, like there are uh, many many viable homeowners that should be we should take action to to save them and keep them in their homes, and banks are working with small businesses and with farmers to determine who are those viable small businesses and who are the viable farmers so that we can do whatever we can to keep them in business. So should the Treasury and the uh, uh, federal regulators uh, of depository institutions work very hard at determining who are the viable banks and make sure that they have access to capital so that we close no more banks than we need to. Now, clearly there are going to be banks have failed and there will be others that will fail. But only the ones that deserve to fail should be the ones that, f that fail. And if there are viable banks that are not being, um, uh, through accounting treatment and through uh, regulatory uh, uh, fiat that was designed in a different time and place uh, and, and isn't as applicable in today's world as it should be, uh, uh, the, the, the regulators have the capability, I believe, of making management assessments and determining who are the viable banks, and I believe that they should have access to that to that capital. Does anybody else have a comment, Mr. Michael? Uh, Senator Bennett, uh, just a reminder: the credit unions have never had access to the TARP funds, although there have been some credit unions that expressed it a need to have access. Uh, but we have been locked out of that opportunity, so we can't comment on the process other than the fact that we're outside looking in. It would seem to me it's an interesting point, Mr. Johnson, on the criteria question because one of the questions that I've had for the administration is 
um, shouldn't we take into account the fact that um, you may have a financial – with respect to TARP, a financial institution failing um, in a region and there simply not being any credit available uh, as part of the way we uh, approach this question because um, there's simply no place for anybody to go, in, in, at least in that part of my state. Um, I wanted to ask you about modifications. You, you talked earlier about uh, home mortgage uh, loan modifications. And are you seeing – these are people that are, that are still paying on their loans but may not have the income that they had before because they're unemployed. Is that the issue rather than um, uh, their home value falling in, in, in these regions b b below what it once was worth? Well, we don't have um, – you know, we, we have home values that are falling. But we never had big run-ups in, in values uh, uh, in, in the past. So that's, that's uh, you know, there are some areas of the country where perhaps uh, if a loan is seasoned five or seven years, it may have dropped 20 percent, but it probably went up more than that over mm -hmm. that period of time. So if they didn't re-leverage that home, they're probably in a position where they could refinance. And that's a problem in Michigan because we never had that big run-up and yet we've had, still had the big run-down. Uh, we basically have, have uh, two types of mortgages. We, we do originate mortgages that we sell uh, to Freddie Mac, uh, although we retain servicing on all of those mortgages. So the point of contact for our customer is still us. Now, we have to follow the Freddie Mac guidelines when we are dealing with delinquencies, uh, non-payment in, in, in that portfolio, and that's precisely what we do. And we have, you know, we're, we're working very hard to figure out what those guidelines are and, and are following them uh, and, are, and have done a, a good number of modifications that are now moving into the second, third month of, of, of that program. And I think we're going to be saving quite a few of those folks. Uh, but we also have portfolio loans where we uh, were making loans that did not, for one reason or another, uh, fit in the box to, with, with Freddie Mac. And frankly, our approach on those is, is a rather tried and true one that has worked for us, for our bank, for all the time that I've been there, which is some 40 years. And that is if, if, uh, if this home is going to be foreclosed upon, we are then going to have to go through a fairly expensive phase where we, uh, where we get an appraisal, we have to get the, f the folks out of the house, uh, uh, they, they have some recourse uh, to extend that period of time, but ultimately we then get possession of the home, we have the problem where the folks have probably not been taking very good care of it for the past several months since they're going to leave, so the value of the home further mm -hmm. goes down. Uh, we have an unoccupied home in a market that is filled with unoccupied homes at that point. So very often the best thing for us to do is essentially sell that house back to the people that already live there. The house is worth what it's worth. And if that means that we take a loss, then we take a loss. We're going to take a loss if we sell it to somebody else. So we might just, just as well recognize what the value of that home is. And if that family can make a payment based upon that new valuation, then that's the way we proceed. And every, everybody wins. Uh, the, the value of the house is higher than it would have been if it had been vacant for six months. Uh, and, and, uh, and we keep the folks in the home uh, and we keep a customer on our books. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for your testimony.